Hello and welcome to another FRQ review video. I realize that in my entire FRQ1 video, I didn't plug much of anything. So I ask of you now, if you'd like to pay tribute to the free content you received all year long from me, I'd be sincerely overjoyed if you'd become a channel member. And if you do, you even get access to an embarrassing video I made for my 11th grade chemistry class. If you decide to become one, I would be truly grateful. So, FRQ2. This one is nice. It's the only other FRQ that requires a graphing calculator. The reason that I say it's nice is because the questions are very specific about what is going to be on them. First, it will start by giving you a real-life scenario. For the A part, you will create a system of equations to solve for a function to represent the scenario. The B part will have you solve for the rate of change, use the rate of change to find another value in the function, and explain a position based on your knowledge of rate of changes in general. Finally, the C part will typically ask you to explain why the model of the rate of change becomes less accurate after a certain point. Once again, here are the topics that the FRQ heavily leans into. And with that, let's nab the 2024 FRQ 2 and solve it together. In case you were wondering, this is the FRQ I put as the questions for my Topic 1.2 video. But I left out critical details in the question in that video, making it much more difficult to solve. So let's start reading. On the initial days of sales, t equals zero, for a new video game, there were 40,000 units of the game sold that day. 91 days later, t equals 91, there were 76,000 units of the game sold that day. The number of units of the video game sold on a given day can be modeled by the function g, given by g of t is equal to a plus b multiplied by the natural log of t plus 1, where g of t is the number of units sold in thousands on day t since the initial day of sales. So t is our days, and g of t is how many games are sold on a given day. Let's turn the two points they give us into xy coordinates. Now let's read part a. Use the given data to write two equations that can be used to find the values for constants a and b in the expression for g of t. All right, so I bet all of you are overthinking this way too much. This question does not ask us to solve for the function. It just asks us to write two equations that can be used to solve a system of equations to solve for the function. So this is easy. We plug in when t equals 0 and when t equals 91. So let's plug those into the skeleton equation, and that's the answer for the first one. All right, next. Find the values for a and b as decimal approximations. All right, so now we are going to use these two equations to solve for one function. First, let's simplify each of them by solving each's respective natural logs. Of course, we do this with a calculator. We see the first equation is equal now to b times 0, which would just be 0, so we get a equals 40. Now let's plug 40 in for a in the second equation and subtract it from 76. Then dividing we get b equals 7.961, which of course I found with my calculator. This means our final answer is the function g of t is equal to 40 plus 7.961 times the natural log of t plus 1. Alright, next one. Use the given data to find the average rate of change of the number of units of video games sold in thousands per day from t equals 0 to t equals 91 days. Express your answer as a decimal approximation. Show the computations that lead to your answer. So this one is easy. We just plug these two points into the rate of change formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and solve. I'd like to mention that if you have a decimal as an answer, you always need to round it to three decimal places. All right, next. Use the average rate of change found in i to estimate the number of units of the video game sold in thousands on day t equals 50. Show the work that leads to your answer. So this one is nice. All we have to do is multiply that rate of change we got earlier by 50 and solve. But since we have a y-intercept at 40 in the original log function, we also need to add that, meaning our final answer is 59.8 thousands of games. Alright, next one. Let a sub t represent the estimate of the number of units of the video game sold in thousands using the average rate of change found in i. For a of 50 found in 2, it can be shown that a of 50 is less than g of 50. Explain why, in general, a sub t is less than g of t for all t, where t is between 0 and 91. So this one is interesting. If we graph the actual function, we see it as a concave down log graph. If we were to graph the rate of change equation we got on top of that, we see it exactly as the question says. The rate of change equation is simply a secant line created to go between the points t equals 0 and t equals 90. So going back to the problem, we need to include two things to get full points. First, we need to say that the graph of g is concave down, or that its rate of change is decreasing. And second, we need to say that the average rate of change is modeled by a secant line. So, we can say something like, the estimate a sub t is the y-coordinate of a point on the secant line that passes through 0, comma, g of 0, and 91, comma, g of 91. Because the graph of g is concave down on the interval 0, comma, 91, this secant line is below the graph of g on the interval 0 to 91. Therefore, the estimate a sub t is less than the value of g of t for all t in the interval 0 to 91. This will give us full points. And on to the last problem. The 
Makers of the video game reported that the daily sales of the video game decreased each day after T equals 91. Explain why the error in the model G increases after T equals 91. This one is easy. To get full points, we need to compare the G function to the actual real-world scenario, so we can say something like, The model G continues increasing because it's a concave down logarithmic function that never decreases. But in reality, sales begin to decrease after day 91. This causes the gap between the model and actual sales to grow, increasing the error in the model. And bam, we have finished FRQ2. Now we'll end this video by me asking you to please subscribe to this channel and watch this video. Thank you all once again.